So thanks everyone for coming to the talk. I'm going to introduce, uh, this is a joint work with uh, collaborators from Google Brain, Xinyang, Tianshen, Jiaxi, Li Chen, and Ed. So let's get started. Uh, so to situate the problem, a well-known issue in recommender system is the so-called uh, reach get reach uh, problem. That is the interaction data is dominated by the most prevalent subgroup in the data set, and they tend to also receive better performance when uh, compared to other uh, users. And to give a more concrete example, let's consider a movie recommender system where the users uh, share different tastes of movies. And when training a recommender with the uh, most widely used empirical risk minimization framework, it can be, give you a pretty good overall performance. But if you look into the more fine-grained uh, evaluations across different subgroups of users, you'll probably find a huge gap among these users. And however, it, it is yet to be validated that how this performance gap could evolve over, uh, over time. So we thus conducted a simulation study on the movie lens 1 million data set to quantify this long-term effect of a recommendation algorithm. So first we split users into three subgroups according to the ratio of their popular, popular items in their consumed histories. And we then train a state-of-the-art two-tower recommendation model under this ERM training framework. And finally, we iterate this process of recommending and uh, feedback simulation, and we retrain it with new data, and then we do uh, uh, conduct a, a new round of recommendation. So we iterate this process for multiple rounds to mimic the real-world setting where we usually uh, train, uh, train the model for uh, uh, over the long period of time. And more details of the simulation study could be found in our paper. So the result is as, as expected. So we find that the initial performance gap is further enlarged by the recommender trained under ERM. And after only a few rounds, we see that the niche users who receive uh, even worse performance and it continuously decreased over time. Also an alerting fact is that if we only focus on the average overall metric, we cannot uh, fit we're we going to largely ignore this issue as most of the users might still be enjoying good enough performance. So hopefully by far, I have motivated you with the uh, consequence of this problem. So how should we tackle it? There are several work in this domain uh, area that aims to lift the, the performance for certain subgroups, such as the long tail items or long tail users but they suffer from several limitations. For example, they either require a specific model architecture design uh, to a specific user uh, subgroups, or they introduce a, a lot of hyperparameters to be optimized that is not very scalable. If you consider a scenario, there are hundreds of uh, user subgroups to be considered. And the most, most important thing is that they tend to sacrifice the overall performance to lift the, the performance of certain worst case user subgroups. And for those who are familiar with the fairness uh, machine learning literature, there are several fairness frameworks that have been proposed and uh, well studied, such as the equality of opportunity. And here we adopt an, an, another framework, which is called distributional robustness, and it's connected to the Russian fairness framework, where the goal here is to maximize the worst case performance to achieve a robust performance in the presence of a distributional shift in the original data. So on this slide, I will highlight uh, the difference between the two framework, the empirical risk minimization and the distributional robust optimization. So given a label data set and a surrogate loss for your particular task, ERM is, uh, is aims to uh, minimize the overall empirical surrogate loss by averaging across the, all the training examples per se. And for DRO, it aims to optimize the worst case loss over an uncertainty set. For example, using the, uh, the F divergence to as the discrepancy measure between the original data distribution, which is uh, usually referred to as the min max problem. An empirical study has shown that for many real world applications, focusing on a too general uncertainty set may be subjective to outliers and noisy data and leads to pessimistic results. And this is especially the case in recommendation data sets, as is, as, as is usually very sparse and quite noisy. So instead, a more practical approach is to define the uncertainty set uh, based on a mixture of M predefined subgroups. For example, the three subgroups uh, with, that we defined in our simulation study. And here we aim to learn this WG uh, that can be perceived as the reallocation of weights on each subgroup that gives the inner max. And this formulation is usually referred to as the group DRO framework. 
And I will briefly introduce the optimization algorithm for group DRO, but more details can be referred to in our paper and, the, and there's a bunch of literature on convex optimization. So basically there are two steps uh, being updated interchangeably. So in the first step, uh, the weight uh, WG is being updated using an exponential term that is proportional to the subgroup losses. So intuitively, if a certain subgroup uh, has a higher loss in, during training, this, this subgroup will be weighted uh, more in the next round of training. And the second step is a standard SGD that uh, uses the weighted version of the subgroup losses to update the model parameters. Uh, however, in, in our experiment, we find some challenges when we try to apply DRO for our recommendation task. Uh, for example, the loss variances for certain subgroups are, are very large across the, uh, across the batches, and uh, thus leads to a very unstable group weight update. So we proposed a simple yet effective optimization improvement, which, which we called a uh, streaming loss DRO that keeps a kind of a moving average group loss estimation to reduce the viruses during the batch, uh, different batches. And we highlight that uh, the alpha here is a hyperparameter that controls how much we, were, we would rely on each new batch of uh, coming data. And we use this uh, group loss estimation L tilde for the standard SGD updates. And there's a nice connection between our proposed uh, uh, streaming loss DRO and the original group DRO that if we set this alpha to one, it returns to the original format of uh, vanilla group DRO. And we show that uh, the streaming loss DRO can effectively reduce the loss during training by this uh, figure. So the, the, the blue lines refers to the streaming DRO, which has a lower virus uh, during the training and empirically, we find that a smaller alpha will result in better performance. So we see if we set alpha to one, this is basically the original group DRO uh, formation. And uh, we use a lower alpha, it will give us better results on the validation set. Uh, so here's an overview of the, uh, the data set we use for our off offline evaluation. So we kind of use a very standard uh, training testing split. And uh, we want to highlight that we use the full corpus evaluation so that we don't do any negative sampling during, uh, during testing. And uh, we use the Movie Lens 20 million and uh, Amazon Book, which are two popular data sets for a uh, benchmark in, in the uh, community. So uh, we compare several baselines. So ERM is the most important, important baseline that we're trying to compete. Uh, and uh, we also compare with uh, another two baselines that also derive on this idea of uh, reweighting on the different subgroups. So uh, for example, the inverse propensity weighting, uh, it's going to uh, reweight the different subgroups according to the uh, inverse propensity of each training samples. So the, uh, the results is basically uh, shown in this table. So we focus on three kind of matri mat metrics. So the average overall metric is what we usually use in, in other valuations. And we focus on the worst case uh, performance, uh, which is one of the three subgroups. And we also show the gap between the best subgroup and versus the uh, worst subgroup. And what we find that is that the family of DRO method uh, are able to improve the worst case performance. And in, encouragingly, we find that uh, it's not going to hurt other subgroups by uh, uh, reducing the overall performance. And the, at the same time, it's also create, create a less gap between the best case and worst case subgroups. Uh, so to quickly conclude, uh, we first demonstrate that uh, there are severe consequences of a recommender trained under EAM during the long-term evaluation. And we propose to use the DRO framework to optimize for the worst case subgroup. And we propose a streaming optimization improvement to reduce the lost estimations. And lastly, we demonstrate that the effectiveness of our proposed method uh, by improving both the worst case and overall performance on two widely used recommendation data sets. And we highlighted several advantages of the use of DRO. So first, they are very easy to scale uh, up with number of subgroups, it, it didn't add much computational cost to the mo original model. And also it's agnostic to the backend recommendation model. So basically you can choose uh, your favorite model for that, that is suitable for your particular task. 
And so for future direction, we are interested in exploring more complex and practical group settings. And we aim to investigate alternative uncertainty sets that defines uh, uh, definitions that can be generalized to multiple group evaluation settings. So with that, I will conclude my talk. And uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions with, uh, with this work. Thanks.